Hello and welcome to Theory Craft. My name's Ben. Over to well, over to my right is my co-host well, Jack. But um, yeah, well, my right, but on the left, but yeah, whatever. Well, from my perspective, it's on his right, but in recording, it's it's yeah, it's technology, folks. It never makes any sense anyway. We are two dudes that love to rant, rave, ramble. Pretty much anything that is TV, movies, comic books, sci-fi, or just random nerdy stuff that we grew up with. For this week, we've been trying this several times, but we've had technological problems. This is probably the fifth attempt. Uh, <laughs> fifth time's a try. But I wanted to go over the classic Jim Carrey movie that is The Mask. But I'd want to change a few things about it and maybe make it less of a comedy and more a horror film. So the thing is, a lot of people may not know, is The Mask is loosely based off a comic book story by the company Dark Horse, which is also owned by DC Comics, yeah. where basically The Mask <coughs> is an artifact that was created via a tribe, I believe it was Native Americans, it could have been some sort of random tribe. Basically, it was a means of torturing certain people, but it also warped their sanity and created them into some sort of chaotic, godish character. Yeah. The movie itself took some aspects of it, but tried to be a bit less gory, and tried to make it more fun-loving. It was pretty much just if Jim Carrey was on a sugar rush the entire movie. Like, I mean, the thing is, you could literally have any Jim Carrey movie and you wouldn't really tell the difference other than the fact that his face wasn't green. Yes. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, the whole point of The Mask is that Stanley Ipkiss is, within the movie, a guy that works for a bank... He doesn't have much of a spine. He's a bit, hmm, and he's a bit down the dumps that nothing's going right for him. And then all of a sudden, one day, he ends up sort of thinking certain things on a bridge. He sees something on the bridge, sorry, in the river below the bridge, and goes in because he thinks it's some guy, to later behold that it's actually the mask. He goes and takes it home, and... While watching random cartoons that I'm assuming are Disney-based or something along the same lines, he thinks, "Oh, shiny, puts on the mask <laughs> and turns into the most wacky-ass version of himself and basically creates chaos throughout his city. I mean, it was a hell of a movie. Like, come on, it's pure 90s. There is nothing about it I think we could change in terms of making it any different from what it was, but I'd like to try and make it slightly more sadistic. Yeah, as a comedy, as a comedy, the thing is bloody brilliant. I don't really like the mask two, the mask one, Jim Carrey. <laughs> well, the thing is with the mask two, oh my Christ, that was a cringe worthy movie. Like, I just that's going to be a topic I think for another day, but it just didn't work. Let's face it, like the the. The Son of the Mask was just pure oh. garbage. Oh, yeah. But essentially, you had a very attractive young Cameron Diaz within it who was a mobster's girlfriend. I don't know how the hell Jim Carrey managed to win her in the end because he didn't really do much to win her over other than the fact that he wasn't an asshole. That was pre basically the only reason why she stuck around with him. But... The ending to the movie fell a bit flat, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, you have this whole <coughs> thing within the whole movie where, as the mask, he creates a lot of chaos and he's being chased down by the police, which is fair enough because police actually are doing their jobs. And then Stanley Ipkiss ends up getting into trouble with the mob. The mob gets his mask. The son of the main mobster puts on the mask. And oh my 
God, is it awful. Like, I don't understand why Jim Carrey's version of the mask doesn't have hair, but the mobster still retains his mullet. It does not bear thinking about. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like they say, oh, it just brings out their inner, like, dark, like, their inner selves. But then it's like the second movie basically rewrites that and says it's Loki, the god of mischief. You end up being a version of Loki. But yeah. it's like, the thing is, the end of the movie is basically the mob's the guy. He gets, he puts on the mask. He tries to basically kill the mayor and all the high officials within the whole city of San Francisco. And he eventually loses the mask, gets taken down by the police. The mayor goes, yeah, it wasn't Stanley Itkus all along. It was him, the mobster. But it's like, yeah, but the mobster literally wore it for five seconds. And yet Stanley Itkus has worn it for like a few weeks, I think, give or take. Yeah. But the thing I wanted to just try and figure out is how could we make it more dark and twisted like the comics, if not a bit more so in terms of making it more horror-like? Well, to be honest, like if uh, like it's obviously you could like bring maybe stick to the like towards the more sort of comic aspect, whereas I had a completely different vision for like my own kind of thinking. So, what was your like sort of idea for it in a main synopsis? So, for the main part, I mean, I most of it I would keep, but the only thing I would say is that the powers of the mask are slightly different. That it's almost like a parasitic thing that it saps the sanity out of people after prolonged use. Uh, I mean, one thing I remember in the movie is that after the first time he wears the mask, he actually has a bit more of a backbone because he chews out his landlady downstairs for basically having a go at him for being just a little bit too loud. Normally, he just ignores her. He's just like, oh, I just can't be dealing with this. But after one day of wearing the mask, he's like, shut it! And the look <laughs> on her face is like... Rrr. So I'd like to try and see the idea that the more you use the mask, the more it corrupts the user, the more it sort of takes a hold of them and sort of whether it replaces them completely or whether it just sucks the sanity out of them to the point where there is nothing left. Uh, this is just a husk of a person. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. That what if to the, there's a point when they finally somehow, some way, get rid of the mask, but then after that, they are pretty much reduced to the state of maybe a child, maybe, and there's nothing whatsoever in their brain, maybe loss of memory completely, loss of cognitive functions. You never know. Well, I mean... I, the only way I could imagine it could work is that considering that the mask was found in a chest that was in the river, it got opened and then it just floated down the river. I could argue the idea that maybe the mask just uses the flow of water to get around the world because it's the only unique way of getting around. So by drawing out the sanity of said person to the point where they get drawn like some sort of programming in them that forces them to go to a river to the point where they got nothing left in their brain to work they slump down to the edge of where the river is and it just goes and slips off and then goes into the river for the next like uh, unwitting like um victim or whatever um i mean there's also the bit where you got him fighting against the biker gang, which is quite a funny scene, to be fair. But I think I'd have it a slightly darker tone where instead of he just slightly roughs them up, like I would have him like try to use cartoonish weapons, but like hack them to pieces. Yeah, or just say like what if um yeah, just like say, what if like has like maybe a um, I can't I don't know what it's called. It's like a jack in the box, but it's like a boxing glove and like punches somebody in the face, but instead their head maybe explodes. Something like yes. that. make it like really gory and fun. But this is it. Like the whole like, thing. Comedy, but have the gore of a horror. Like the only way you could. It's almost like um, when we're watching that Killer Clowns from Space thing, where they had all those wacky tools that didn't look like they could do any harm, but they just completely obliterated anybody they used it against that would be 
the right mentality, but it's again, it's one of these things where how far would you go? Because I'd probably have it more sort of as a as a thriller in a way, not so much a horror, because like thriller and horror are a bit two different things. Because I like the kind of the psychological I like kind of the psychological elements of the mask, not so much like the uh sort of like the gore the gore and everything like it's kind of like in a, it's kind of like in like action films as we talked about oh just add in a, my, the michael bay syndrome just add in loads of explosions and it'll be good <laughs> but you know and it's not the case when like more blood doesn't necessarily equal a good horror film so no i wanted to like more probe into the more psychological aspects of a parasitic mask i mean trying to think in terms of what else because the whole point of the mask is the fact that he just has no sanity at all. It is basically, if the Joker just gave, couldn't give a damn and then just able to rewrite reality, that's literally it. Well, the idea which I had was um, you could set it up as a prelude as well. You could do this as a prelude, but um, say the Mask's Origins. Do you know the original Mask's Origins? So the mask origins within the comics itself was it was some sort of tribe that created the mask, used it as either a means of torturing people or using it as like a way to weaponize people within their tribe to sacrifice them in the end. I don't know. There's a lot of if, buts and maybes with it. Well, in that case, since we're, I'm going to have to stick to the comics, is I don't really want to rewrite an already pre-established origin. I don't like to do that, just because otherwise it never usually goes well, because a lot of movies and so on fall into that rabbit hole, and it just ends up being a mess. So let's just stick to an established set of rules. But I had the idea of, um, depending on when the mask was created, what if as a prelude throughout history, we see a prelude of like so many events throughout history, the multiple baddies, such as like maybe Hitler, Stalin, and so on, wore the mask at some point, and that's why they went a bit nuts with their plans, and that's why they did a lot of the crazy stuff that they've done. So, what if like a lot of like these world leaders or whatever, or politicians, or in general just evil people, like maybe you could include maybe uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, something like that, or maybe Ted Bundy, and all these people worn the mask and come into the possession of the mask at some point. And it's driven them to the point of complete insanity. And that's why they've made all these crazy decisions. And then along the line ends up in Jim Carrey's hands. But that's the idea which I had at first. Yeah, I mean, that could work as like a historical thing because... Yeah, like a prelude, yeah. Like we say, the whole idea I want to keep is like it's sapping the sanity out of said people. I'd also like to make it so it's like an addictive type of parasitic thing. So, oh, we sit. Sorry, camera oh, went a bit okay. glitch. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we could have political figures. You could also have it as some sort of like weird ritual type thing. So, like, there's a lot more to the mask than say just the sapping of the sanity like it could be like a two-parter thing that never got finished so it's like with a lot of type of movies where there's curses like the curse gets half done that's why it goes a bit wonky towards the end because there's no finalized step to it so it could be that the whole point of it is that you're supposed to turn into some type of god but because it got corrupted midway through it's just the like traveling from host to host in hope of trying to find some stability but obviously it just didn't work so it's just going round and round and round um i mean let's have a look what else have we got in my notes i the biggest part of the movie that I really never understood why they did it, and they did it for the second one as well. Why the hell does the dog wear the mask? That I never understood. The... <sighs> for the sake of comic relief, for the sake of comic relief. It was, but at the same point, it's like the the dog's face is like tripled in size compared to the size of the dog itself. 
at least I, I just find it really bizarre. Yeah, me too. I mean, within the comics, the character which Cameron Diaz plays is meant to be Stanley Ipka's girlfriend anyway. And she does wear the mask at one brief point within the whole story arc where she just basically turns into a female version of what Jim Carrey portrayed. So I'd be quite intrigued if they could have added that so she could have got like her final thing against the mobster guy because the mobster guy was quite abusive. He was quite narcissistic. He was an absolute asshole, basically. Um, but other than that, I think the masking as a general thing, it if we were to make it like a horror, I'd say it'd be almost like uh, American Psycho, where you got obviously Christian Bale, not sure of what he's been up to, whether anything he's actually done is actually what he's been up to, whether he's imagined it all. I mean, you could have it towards the end of the movie, the whole concept that Jim Carrey basically imagined all of it and then the mask just either he throws it away or whether he just gives it up or whether the mask just never got stuck in his face in the first place. But it's a very bizarre comic series nonetheless because... They all, to a degree, have the same impulses. That's the one thing that was a bit odd within the movie, was that they... Jim Carrey's character was very cartoony, like the comic, but the mobster guy was just a mobster guy that had a very derp and very <clears throat> voice, and that was it. He didn't showcase any abilities... He didn't even do much. He had the mask for like five minutes and then he got like thrown off again. Yeah. But I think as a whole, The Mask is definitely a movie I hope they do remake eventually. But whether or not they could make it darker, I have no idea. I think when it comes to the mask, a really cool way, a good, like, because obviously you got Venom as a little bit of a comparison, as that's the perfect sort of uh, catalyst for a, uh, like, a parasitic symbiote, and the mask kind of the same thing. Or there's a lesser known film, which was called Clown, and it was from 2016, yes. I believe, and is when this guy who's like a, I think he's like a professional, I think he's like a clown in his spare time for kids' parties and so on, mm -hmm. just to earn money, whatever. And he comes into possession of an antique clown costume. Yes. And he puts the, the nose on, puts the costume on, everything. But because it's a cursed uh, costume, this this film sounds... I think this film is really underrated. It's actually quite scary. And mm. like, He puts on the whole costume, and over time, gradually, he finds he can't take the nose off. He can't take the material off. He tries to cut it off, but he ends up cutting himself instead. And he eventually turns into a clown monster. So maybe that could be something similar. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, the only thing about the mask is that obviously it turns the entire head green. And then there isn't much else in terms of transformation from that, but they just sort of warp reality around them to just do all this wacky nonsense. So whether... It could be this idea that perhaps after prolonged use, if they were to gain control of it, they could suck the sanity from other people as well while wearing the mask. I suppose like, so, like it's kind of like being almost an energy vampire in a way. So sort of, yeah, come into contact with people by taking their sanity. Thus, everybody become thus. It's a kind of a really weird plot twist. So. In a way, the one who's wearing the mask, Jim Carrey, is completely nuts, but by sapping everybody's sanity around him, pretty much everybody else becomes nuts, but he believes he's the one who's sane. Yes. That which, is weird. <laughs> which in itself would be whether or not... It's one of those arguments that if you know you're crazy, it's not crazy, but if, if that makes sense. Like, if you know you're already crazy, it's not crazy because you know you're crazy, but it's not crazy. Yeah, I get that, yeah. But it's like, when you're sane, obviously, it doesn't matter because everyone just doesn't give a damn. But, <laughs> I mean, 
it could also be this point where instead of making them just insane it could leave them comatose so there's bodies after bodies after bodies just left randomly in like alleyways or whatever that have just been comatose so there's still some slight brain activity but not enough for them to be up and walking or maybe so if like jim carrey has enough of his sanity around maybe the middle of this film or whatever that we're creating then what if at some point he actually has to try and dive into the history of the mask to try and see if he can uh, like going back through history, if there is any hit, any history on it, maybe finds the tribe or something like that, or wherever it came from, or past people that have worn the mask, and then tries to find out how he can maybe remove the mask or keep the mask but still retain sanity. Maybe you could possibly try doing that, like a mystery kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it would be quite cool to see like random sketches throughout history. Like you could make it even more bizarre. So it's gone so far back in time that it could have been. The mask was around, say, Pompeii, where it was because of the mask that the volcano erupted because they did something so stupidly insane that it caused the volcano to go. <laughs> okay, yeah. And so, like, there's other random cataclysmic events throughout history that it could be linked to. Yeah, or even like other things, like just because like Houdini was such a good magician and such a good illusionist, what if he actually had the mask at some point and was able to pull off those tricks? Again, it's one of these things where you could just use random events like that throughout history. You could also say maybe it was on the Titanic. Okay, yeah. So like it could be someone on the Titanic who was rich enough owned it and they wanted to bring it over to america but obviously one of the people that it's like one of the poorer people got bored saw the mask went oh what's this put it on didn't realize and then all hell breaks loose and that's why the ship just went Pow. yeah and yeah, they just blame awesome. they just blame it on an iceberg because they just couldn't explain what happened oh my damn <laughs> yeah um well, I, was, I, was, I had a really good point. I can't remember what I was going to say now. Uh, ah, so one other thing as well is I'd love the idea that there is like a split persona idea. So I don't suppose you ever saw it, but there was a Avengers cartoon series many years ago called Avengers Earth Mightiest Hero. Yeah. And you remember that series, there was the Hulk, and obviously when it was either Banner or Hulk in charge, the reflection was the opposite one. They could have like conversations with one another. I'd love that, but with the mask. Yes. So like <laughs> over time, like Jim Carrey keeps seeing like this random reflection of a Green's like face version of himself, and he keeps dismissing it because he thinks, ah, oh, no, it's just. Like, I'm tired, it's yeah, been a long week at work. Or well, sort of like every time he turns his back to a window or something, the reflection in the window is like behind his back, like, like <laughs> or just like some... pulling like weird faces or whatever. Yeah, some, like it's being like, wacky. Well, it's of, being... You, can have it, you can have it sort of like funny, but in a way, so it's actually quite scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could have it so his reflection, when he sort of slowly realises what the reflection is, he could be having conversations with normal people and then the reflection that he sees is just doing this weird stuff around the reflection of the person he's actually talking to. Yeah, or when he's like walking down the street and obviously his, uh, the sun's casting a shadow, but his shadow's doing something else. You know? Yes, that'd be quite cool as well. Like some weird... Ex I mean, you could have it in some way that if it's the shadow whether it had some ability to do agree, like to manipulate stuff around him. Yeah. So it could be that he tries to knock over a ladder and then someone goes flying. you got like random traffic lights that keep tripping out. Like it interferes with little things as best it can, but only in close proximity because obviously it can't stretch out too far. Yeah. But then, obviously, over time, he starts hearing the voice of, like, prove me on, let me make chaos. Like, <laughs> like, just some weird sadistic voice, obviously. Not the Wicked Witch from the West, but something close. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... <sighs> the thing is, as well, is there's the scene where he goes to the garage, if you remember, where they try to rip him off to try and fix his car, and they just don't do anything. 
and then he ends up going there and he shoves an exhaust pipe up their asses. Yeah. Like, would you want to make that darker or would you keep it like as a that as the low level and it progresses from there? I would honestly keep that as a low level and build it up. Okay, so I mean, there's not a lot of scenes where he does attack people because it's only you got that scene there, and then you got the biker gang, and then it's the last bit of the movie where he's up against the mobsters, and then that's it. Yeah. So, I mean, the police are chasing him down. How would you like get the police to try and be involved? Because within the comics. The guy that's trying to like interrogate Jim Carrey's character does wear the mask briefly. He tries to use it in his like own way as being a vigilante by trying to keep his sanity, but it doesn't last long. Like he ends up doing some really bizarre stuff. Yeah. So, because the thing is, there is a bit where I think Stanley, because where he wears the mask in the comics, he's surrounded by cops and they completely like obliterate him with bullets. And you see it go straight through his body, and he's just like, ah, that's gonna smart. And yeah. he just like walks off. So as long as you wear the mask, you're technically immortal. Yeah, well, say like there's a scene where he gets like a bullet through like the head or something like that, goes in one side, out the other, just like a Deadpool moment. And he kind of well, goes, you know, when he looks through, when Deadpool looks through his arm and he's like, mother effer. <laughs> you know, and he, has, and he has one of them moments. and like when uh maybe like Jim Carrey's character gets like a bullet through the head in one side out the other, but then like when the cops are all pointing the guns at him, like in shock that he's still alive, he just like reaches into his pocket thinking he's gonna pull out another gun. But instead he pulls out like a magic cloth or something, puts it in one side, puts it through the other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that could work. I would like the idea that they like they shower him with bullets still. And then he just goes, hmm, well, ah, that's what was indigestion, and just throws it off to the side or something. Yeah. But I, I like mean, that you could still keep the comedy, but have it be horror. Yeah, this is it. Like, the, you could keep it really toony, but I mean, I like the scene where he makes that Tommy gun out of a um, balloon. Which is a very bizarre moment, but I'd argue I'd also like to see more cartoony styled weapons, like you mentioned with the boxing gun, um, gun glove. Yeah. I'd also say that the oversized mallet, like a really giant mallet that just goes. Spluck. Yeah, or like you can, or you can even have a moment, you know, when it's like when you have like the joke guns, like the bang, and it literally comes out of a little flag that says bang on it. Yeah, um, I would have thought like you could have like a cop or whatever on his knees, like he's about to execute him, and accidentally shoots him with a real gun, and he pulls out the actual one. He goes, "Oh crap! I was meant to use this one." <laughs> like, yeah. and, he just, and he just goes, "Oh, oh wrong gun." <laughs> I mean, you could also have a bit where he goes, "I surrender," and he's trying to like rifle through his pockets, trying to find like a flag or something. He ends up finding loads of tissues. And then there's like a really, really tiny white flag or something. Yeah. Like, we can't see it. And he goes, what about this? And he just, like, ends up shooting them all. And it's like... Yeah, that'd be quite funny. <sighs> but, I mean, how would you want to end this movie? Would you want, like, Stanley Itkus to just get rid of the mask by random means? Or would you want him to just end up be succumbing to the whole thing and he just become comatose to it and just that be it? That I don't know. It's just like I would argue that maybe, even though losing his sanity, maybe he may end up somewhere funny. Like so he may end up like some kind of um, asylum or something. Mm. And I don't know. Maybe like towards like he's like living his life and everything, trying to piece together what the hell has been happening over the last few weeks, months, or whatever. And um, Somehow or another, maybe like the staff organized like a Halloween party in the mental health hospital, and like where, as they're bringing in like all the costumes and everything like that, and like party hats, whatever, the mask is in one of the boxes, and you see him sort of like look down at the box and just like get have a cheeky smile on his face, and then just cut to credits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that could work. To be fair, I mean, 
you could also have this idea that obviously keep Cameron Diaz, but you could have it so he has this weird fixation with her and he believes that she loves him and it's like she doesn't like there's some weird part of him that's clinging on to dear life to make her because i still don't understand how he won her in the end of the movie like, i don't know because i maybe like that maybe she's like the last little bit of his sanity which is left to go and because he's trying to hold on to that so much the mask is trying to prod more of that you know so you could have it what that it's the only bit of him that's like still kicking around okay yeah, yeah that could work yeah yeah, I think, well, for half an hour's ranting of randomness, it's not doing too bad today, to be fair. Actually, yeah, got quite a lot in. Okay, though, well, I mean, it's short and sweet, but there we go, folks. It's just me and Jack ranting and raving as per about... The fifth well, time we've yeah. tried to do this, and each time we've had technical difficulties for whatever reason. I will say this, I'm going to make you a custom T-shirt at some point. The running joke of this channel is that you eat sodding tinfoil. Every time something goes wrong, I ask if he's eating any tinfoil because it's yeah. the only thing I can imagine. Yeah, like it's like, that's been a running joke ever since this channel has been up. And I've noticed another thing as well that I is a pretty much like I don't know why, because obviously we stopped kind of um, we didn't stop recording. We were just like taking a break from filming at Ben's well studio. And um, we stopped filming there because obviously due to the pandemic and everything, safety reasons, all that kind of stuff. But now we can actually get back into it. But I'm almost hesitant to come back in and have my rock microphone back because every time I come round, something goes wrong. Like you I'm came like, over. I, I feel you... like the luckiest, unluckiest YouTuber. <laughs> but the thing is, you came over last week because we were doing some saber training, which I will upload at some point. And you had a look at the new gear. And then as soon as you left, it just wouldn't bloody work. And I, I like I literally I don't touch anything, I don't put my hands on nothing, but yet somehow I affect everything. He he's just living static. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think I might be a mutant. <laughs> well, it is Devon. Yeah, except I'm from Berkshire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there we go. So next week is obviously Jack's topic, which is going to be what? Well, this is going to be an interesting one as I've actually started writing a few notes already over the last few weeks on a, um, a possible film idea, even though it's not technically my idea, but it's expanding on it and making a completely different film out of it. Because the first Assassin's Creed film we got with Michael Fassbender, although it had the capabilities of being good, it got lost so much in translation from the traditional games, which I hated. Um, not the games, I love the games, but that film just got so lost and I would love to have a go at fixing that and also write my own and also if an animus is possible, if memories can be passed through DNA and all that jazz of oh, my favourite load of films. So that's going to be probably the topic for next week, providing everything works this time. <laughs> well, we've done all right today. So I think so far technology is liking us so long as you stay away from the tinfoil. But there we go. So it's been a little bit of a short episode today just to finally get this sorted. <laughs> and again, time of trying to do this. <laughs> and again, thanks for joining us. If you like our videos, come join us on YouTube. We're always happy to hear from anybody that's got any ideas that wants to sort of expand on what we go from. We're always trying to find new ideas. We are doing all right, but we're sort of a bit stuck because a lot of movies have been put back quite a bit for the past year. So, although, however, now you've got something new, Ben, because now obviously the first like Loki has come out. So, you said you're going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, I will po probably post a video up at some point about that one. It's been a very interesting series so far. And it's definitely something I want you to watch at some point as well. I'll have to let you watch my use my Disney Plus. But yeah, there we go. So again, thanks for joining us. Stay safe, stay home, and stay very safe, people, please. And we'll see you all soon. Yeah.